Big up tits number one for New Country 98.1. The Hawk, it is the Hawk Morning Show. Glenn and Tracy, tell you what a weekend you had. <laughs> and what an amazing weekend. I am back from a weekend trip to Washington, D.C. It was the trip of a lifetime. And I know if it was emotional and just unbelievable for me, I can't even imagine what it must have been like Mm -hmm. for our local veterans who joined us. Now, this is through the Twin Tiers Honor Flight Network. And if you're not familiar with them, they're, they're under the umbrella of the Honor Flight Network. And this is a national organization, a nonprofit organization that sends veterans to Washington, D.C., to see their memorials and give them, uh, you know, a hero's welcome and um, really give them a chance to see a lot of things that they might not otherwise have the chance to see. So over the weekend, we took 24 local veterans from World War II, from Vietnam, from Mm. Korea. We took them to Washington, D.C., and I knew that it was going to be gut-wrenching. I knew that I, it was going to be emotional. I knew that it was going to be exciting. I had no true idea mm. of just how amazing it was going to be. And we'll talk about this throughout the morning, but um, I got teamed up with a guy named Pep. I couldn't stop looking at him, and I started to feel creepy. And I said, <laughs> Pep, I know that I know you from somewhere. Where do I know you? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> and then I said, I got it. You go to breakfast in Endicott, don't you? And he said, yes, I do. And I said, you go to Fast Studies Cafe, don't you? And he said, yes, I do. And you, I said, you're friends with Maria and Eddie, aren't you? And he said, yes, I am. And I said, me wow. too. Me too. So I've seen him at uh, my friend's cafe many times. Never realized he was a World War II veteran. That just goes to show you who is around us and how little we actually know about each other. But I can't wait to share with you some of the stories from this trip. Big up to this number one for New Country, 98.1 The Hawk. It is the Hawk Morning Show, Glenn and Trace. So I made a new friend over the weekend, and mm-hmm. his name is Pep. I've just decided I'm going to adopt him. I don't know if he wants me or not, but he's going to get me. <laughs> I went to Washington, D.C. with 24 local veterans through the Twin Tiers Honor Flight Network, and I was paired up with Pep. Pep and I went everywhere together. Nice. And there was one point over the weekend <laughs> that I said, Pep, do you wish you could get away from me? And he said, uh-huh. <laughs> and I don't know if, he, if that's because he really did want to get away from me or if it's because he didn't understand what I was saying <laughs> or if he wanted somebody else to drive his wheelchair because I am not wheelchair driving proficient. <laughs> Although after this weekend, I would consider Uh, myself expert level. That's for sure. Pep, he was like a little kid. I said, Pep, how old are you? He said, I'm 90, but I'm almost 91. (laughs) It's like when you're, you know, I'm six, but I'm almost seven. Yeah, six and a (laughs) half. I'm six and three quarters. (laughs) Pep is super excited to be turning 91. So I'm just saying that he's 91. So Pep is just an amazing guy. He's from Endicott, born and raised. He got his name from his mom. Used to yell out to him, Pep, Pep. So the kids in the neighborhood picked up on that, started calling him Pep, Pep. And here he is 91 years later, and he's still going by that name. So we went to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. yesterday, and I was taking Pep through to see all of the World War II stuff. It was just amazing. It was incredible. There was a scene where they had the, um, you know, when the news broke on TV and everybody just erupted mm-hmm. in excitement and stuff. And I, I, I wheeled Pep over there and I said, Pep, is this what it was like? Do you remember this kind of excitement? Like, is it really what it looked like on TV? And he said, oh, yeah. He told me he was in New York City the day that the news came out, mm. that the war was over. Wow. And he said it was just incredible to him. But then we started looking at some of the other stuff, and we were looking at the uniforms and and, and some of the uh, weapons, and I spotted some combat boots, and I said, Peppa, are these the kind of boots that you wore? And he said, no, no, no. So every time we would see some combat boots, I would say, Hmm. Pep, are these the kind of boots you wore? We wheeled him into this one room, and Pep's face just lit up like a kid at Christmas, (laughs) and he just went, oh! Like this, and he pointed, and he said, those, those are my boots. So I took him over to look at them, and the boots were exactly like the ones that Pep uh, wore when he served in the Army in World War II. And here's the thing. The boots were made by the Endicott Johnson Shoe Company right in Pep's own hometown. 
And he told me that whenever he looked at a comrade in the boots, he was reminded of home. Oh Such an God. exciting weekend. I got a call last Monday from the Twin Tiers Honor Flight Network. Mm. And they said, hey, we're taking a bunch of veterans to uh, Washington, D.C. this weekend. You want to go? And I was like, <laughs> absolutely. I've never been to Washington, D.C., so I knew this nice. was going to be yeah. really exciting for me. But more more about the veterans and um, giving our veterans the opportunity to go see their memorials and um, you know be recognized. And man, mm. was it emotional. We left from the American Legion on Robinson Street in Binghamton, and there was a bunch of people who came out and clapped and cheered, and they read proclamations, and it was just absolutely unbelievable. And as we got closer and closer to Washington, D.C., the excitement was in the air and and everybody was just so ready for this. And we got the surprise of a lifetime. We actually had National Park Service police (laughs) escort our bus right down the George Washington Parkway as we headed into Washington, D.C. Nice. And I think my favorite quote of the trip came from this moment. When somebody said, guys, this is what it's like to be Moses, because (laughs) the George Washington Parkway is two lanes. Right. And our police escorts were riding right down the middle, right on the center line. And so were we. And cars literally were splitting and going off to the sides on either side. And the the police escorts had the sirens on. and, And I know people were like, what in the world is going on? Who is on that bus? You know who was on that bus? 24 twin tier veterans who were so deserving of this and we just had the most fantastic police escorts we had um for the first day we had a traffic police officer who is a former air force and Mm -hmm. he actually took us at nighttime to go see the air force monument we got to drive by and see that something that we would not have been able to do had he not been our escort and also joining him was a plain closed um detective and they were just absolutely amazing. And then the second day, we had a police officer on a motorcycle. And we also had Rosie the Riveter. Oh, my goodness. One of our police officers was dressed up as Rosie the Riveter. Googled it if you don't oh know Oh, my what goodness. That is. Her That's name is Bonnie. Nice. And she took the time to talk with our mm, veterans awesome. and take photos with them. And it was really unbelievable. I don't think I'm ever going to come down from this high that I'm feeling. I just am on top of the world, exhausted, but on top of the world uh-huh. after visiting Washington, D.C. with the Twin Tiers Honor Flight this weekend. We took 24 local veterans to see their their memorials. It was unbelievable. We got a group photo taken in front of the Lincoln Memorial. Nice. And uh, I didn't get to walk all the way up to see Lincoln's statue, but um, I could see from down below where I was standing. It was incredible. I was standing in the, the National Mall. If I know you don't know what I'm talking yes. about, then think Forrest Gump. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I knew that mo- more people would be able to visualize that than what yes. I'm going to say next. What I'm going to say next is who we really should think is Martin Luther King Jr. Mm, he gave his famous I Have a Dream speech there. And um, I just have to share this with you. One of the gentlemen, one of the local veterans who joined us, And he said, the last time that I was in Washington, D.C., I was 14 years old. And he asked his mom if he could go to Washington to see Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak. Oh, my gosh. It's making me emotional right now because he was just just sitting there in awe, looking around, Uh. reflecting on how his life has changed since he was 14 years old. He's he's in his, I don't know, 70s, 80s right now. And um, never did he imagine when he was there to, to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak that the world would change as much as it has and mm. that he would go through all that he went through. Beautiful to see. And yes, I actually yes. went there when I was 13, took a bus when I was 13. Oh, wow. Taking a trip to Washington, D.C. over the weekend with 24 local veterans who served in World War II in Vietnam in the Korean War. It was just unbelievable. Made a lot of new friends. Man, I just really enjoyed this group of people. I am so honored that I was invited to be part of this. But I I would like to point out that it cost so much money Mm -hmm. to send our veterans on these trips. I mean, 
just a crazy amount of money. And usually we, we take an uh, airplane or they take an airplane. This year they, they didn't receive the funds that they were looking for, so we took a bus trip, which I thought was unbelievable. Hmm. But if you would like to make a donation to help our veterans be able to experience Washington, D.C. and their memorials, you can find out how to do that at 981thehawk.com. 